Welcome to another episode of In the Garden for A Gardener's Notebook. I'm Douglas E. Welch. For more information on A Gardener's Notebook and everything else that I do, visit douglasewelch.com. In today's episode, an interesting project to map all the trees in Los Angeles, juncos and hummingbirds in the garden, and planting our new free pomegranate tree to add some more fruit and productivity to the garden. More after this. Spring is bringing a lot of visitors to the garden in the last few weeks. These Oregon, Western, or dark-eyed juncos we're visiting quite frequently here in the garden. I use all three of the names because there's actually a little bit of confusion over exactly what type of juncos these are, and the name has changed several times over the last several years. So enjoy the juncos and perhaps we'll figure out exactly what sub-variety they are in the future. Along with the juncos and other birds, we've actually developed a nice population of hummingbirds visiting our feeders here in the garden. I added this feeder recently to the window of my office where I can keep a closer eye on it and keep the camera set up. You can find more video of the hummingbirds and the juncos in their own complete videos on the YouTube channel or on the blog, douglasewelch.com slash A-G-N. Just like the sun. Reading through my news feeds the other day, I came across this interesting project, Tree Map LA. This is an effort to map every tree in the city of Los Angeles. Here's what the website had to say. Tree Map LA is an ambitious collaboration of nonprofits, local governments, and businesses, and you to map every tree in greater Los Angeles. By entering every tree's location, species, and current size, and updating its needs, we create a powerful tool to learn about our urban forest and its value including specific environmental and economic benefits. This information will help us to manage the well-being of our region's urban forest and make our city more livable, shadier, cleaner, safer, and more beautiful, and better able to meet climate change impacts including heat, flooding, and drought. Users of this information include government agencies, arborists, landscape architects, planners, students, civic organizations, and everyday citizens. With TreeMap LA, concerned citizens and tree enthusiasts throughout Los Angeles can learn, communicate, and take action on behalf of the trees around us. The open tree map used for this project is actually a larger project overall throughout the entire world. You may find a similar project in your area. Check it out. You'll find a link on the blog. I've already added a few trees from my own garden. Now let's step out into the garden. Our first job out here in the garden today is to plant this, our brand new pomegranate tree. And the local water board, the LADWP, or the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, did like many water agencies are doing these days, and they're giving away free trees to encourage people to plant them, to shade their homes, to save on electricity, to save on water, and to just generally brighten up the environment around their home. Um, so we went specifically looking for a fruit tree. They didn't have a lot of fruit trees, they had mainly shade trees, but I knew going in that I wanted, if anything, a pomegranate tree, and that's exactly what we've got here. Now this is a wonderful pomegranate, Granata Maravillosa, Maravillosa I guess, Punica Granatum Wonderful. And uh, again, this was totally free, we just had to show up with our water bill and prove to them we lived in their district. And it was actually quite a popular event, there were probably a good 200 people there uh, waiting to pick up trees of various sorts. Um, Today, we're gonna to plant this in this circular bed here. This is where a pine tree was years and years and years ago. We had two in the front yard here and there, which were basically old Christmas trees that had been planted. And we, um, they died off very quickly when we changed our watering plants. So we grew onions in this bed a few years. They did eh, okay, but I immediately had the idea when I saw the uh, free tree giveaway that this would be the perfect place to put a pomegranate tree. Right over here in my neighbor's yard, he actually has an apple tree and just beyond that a pomegranate tree which grow like mad. So I think we're doing well in our placement of this tree. It'll actually be nice, it'll shade the house. This is our bedroom right here. It'll shade the bedroom a little bit during those uh, hot 
summer afternoons where the other tree that was here used to do that. So it should be pretty nice. I'm not sure if I want to keep this a multi-trunked or a single-trunked tree. I think I'm probably going to keep it a single trunk tree, but actually prune it into a nice shape so it's easily harvestable. Uh, this is part of our whole project out here to grow more food, like we've done with the sweet potatoes and the carrots and all the herbs and stuff we've been planting. This is definitely part of that process of getting more fruit trees here in the garden, bringing more of that goodness into our home and sharing it with our friends. So here we are with the hole for the pomegranate tree. Now they say to make it twice as big as the container. It's about a five gallon container, so it's quite a big hole. I'm also, uh, as often happens in the garden, you gotta be a little bit creative. As I said, there was a pine tree in the spot and we didn't take the roots out. We ground the stump down, but the roots and everything is still here and I'm actually hitting some of those. So I had to kind of come to one side and find a more open area where I can put the tree in. It really won't matter. Uh, it's pretty much still centered in the circle, but it'll give the roots plenty of space to expand and get a good grip on the soil. And it'll also help to break down the roots that are already there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna empty this out a little bit more. Might have to dig a little bit deeper. I'm gonna check that uh, next. Let's see here. You wanna plant the tree at the same level that it's originally in the container. So I do need to go a little bit lower. And actually, since the pot is taking up some space, it'll actually settle a little bit lower in the hole once I'm done. So we got the hole about as deep as I'm able to get it. Uh, we'll probably have to mound up the soil a little bit to match the level of the pot, just because, again, you gotta make do, and we have to avoid the roots that are already there. So one of the things I've always been told is never lift a tree sapling by its trunk. You always wanna lift it from the pot uh, and try not to handle it too much because you will break the roots inside. Well, of course, at the giveaway, I saw people carrying these out by the trunks and it uh, didn't seem like a wise thing to do, but I'm just gonna roll this around a little bit. The soil in here is actually pretty good. We'll knock it out. There it goes, coming out nicely. And just go right into the hole as easily and gently as we can. And actually, as I said, with the uh, with the roots in there and the pot taking up a little bit of space, this is actually sitting lower than even I had thought it might sit. So I think that's going to be pretty good. We're going to backfill this in. We're going to make a little moat around it. And we're going to uh, water it in for today. And hopefully, within the next few years, we'll start getting some wonderful little pomegranates off this free tree. It's probably a little hard to see, but right there in the center of the picture is a blueberry flower on this uh, somewhat well-begotten blueberry bush. We actually picked it up at a discount at the local home store, uh, and it suffered a little overwatering. We weren't real clear on the watering for it, so I got a little water and started to drop its leaves, but it's now coming back. It's releafing, and just today we noticed some blossoms forming on it, so maybe we'll get a few blueberries off this bush this season. So that's it for this episode of In the Garden for a Gardener's Notebook. I'm Douglas E. Welch. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can leave your questions and comments on the website, on the YouTube video, wherever you find more convenient. You can also visit douglasewelch.com and find out everything that I do, including career opportunities, a gardener's notebook, technology IQ, careers in new media, and much, much more. Until next time, keep on planning in your garden and keep on digging.